Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife, Melissa, and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald, and this is Curiosity Inc. Well, it's been a very busy day. The kids are all inside the cottage right now, and I am uh, headed off. I've got a fellow I've got to meet. I'm not looking at my watch, but my watch isn't on right now because we were at the ocean. Uh, I've got a fellow I'm supposed to meet in about a half an hour who's a local collector. We're going to meet him, see his collection. Maybe he'll have something to sell. Who knows? Either way, we'll get to meet a new uh, a person and um, see what he has. So let's go visit and uh, check out his collection. So I've stopped to meet Cameron here today. He's invited me up to his house to have a look at some of his collections. He's been collecting for quite a while. For being a young guy, he's been in the paper a couple times. Uh, now we're gonna have a chance to see what there is. And uh, already in the front step, I noticed there's some stuff. Aside from the uh, playful dogs, the attack dogs, <laughs> uh, we'll meet Cameron here. Head inside or whatever you think. Sure, well Cameron, very nice to meet you. Yeah, so you've been collecting since you're how old? Seven. Seven. Yeah. Oh, you got me pretty well beat then, because I started when I was about nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I started digging bottles my first year when I was seven, and then I think that same summer we found a bunch of poison bottles, and I, I think I sold them for 500 bucks. You know, when you're seven and you get 500 bucks, that's like a million. And where were you right? finding all the poison bottles at? Out in our woods. We have like 30 acres back there, so there's. All oh, so you started of... picking here on this property? Yeah. So that was the first kind of experience I had at, and then it just developed from there. When I seen there was. And is this stuff that came out off the beach or out of the woods or? Yeah, this is all stuff from the beach. We found different things. We found like poison bottles on the beach too, but that's just some of the, we try to clean it up the best we can. So all that stuff. Right. Is Part of a up. car yeah. horn. I mean, you expect to see stuff like. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of petrified wooden things like that, but at one point it was a dump on the beach too. So like all the good stuff obviously wouldn't be right. here. It's too bad that wasn't, I mean, it's obviously not a Rolex or anything, but still this would have been somebody's yeah. dive watching it. I was saying earlier, it makes you wonder what happened to the diver. Yeah, there's always quite that. a story attached to anything you find. You didn't have to pull it off of what looked like a piece of uh, white wood. It yeah. might have been his his bone. Yeah, yeah, we found a, a couple of methods in a bottles there. Actually. Oh, did you? A couple, both of them were modern, but I mean, one of them was from uh, England. Oh, and, and it made, made it all, it all the way, way up like three minutes from her house. So that's kind of cool. Just they had a whole message in their email attached and things like that. So well, that's cool. I mean, that's some of the neat stuff you find. I mean, it's not exactly monetary value for a lot of the stuff. So it wasn't like, help me. I'm stuck on no, this island. It was more, they were trying to see where the currents were going. And it was like a scientific group off England that sent it out. And it, sure enough, it turned up on PEI. So it's pretty neat to see something travel all that way. Did you have to report it into the, yeah, we reported it in. We like made contact with them for a year and they, they were showing us they had sent a bunch of bottles out and they were going all over like North America and South America. Like they kind of just went all over the place. So it wow. was neat. Yeah, they had a, like a whole spreadsheet map kind of deal. So I guess that's why we don't travel by bottle because we wouldn't yeah. know where we'd end up. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's go inside and have a look at the collection. Yeah, absolutely. All right. You're taking your collecting pretty seriously already. I've been in uh, many guys' houses over the years and a lot of guys much older than you with far less of a collection. So you like the oil cans? Yeah, I'm big into advertising. I actually started collecting oil cans last August and I got pretty heavy into them <laughs> pretty quickly. But... Well, I can spot you've got some good ones up there already. You've got the Anarco, the Red Indian, the White Rose, and the Dursal is the better of the White Rose cans. Um, Hippo, a lot of people think that, I mean, that's not automotive, but it's a really great graphic with yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Hippo getting a bath. <laughs> yeah, that's like... I think my favorite now would probably be the Narco. I started taking a liking, like there's a, the tourist package one up there. That's probably the rarest of the ones I have, but. Yeah, and the Narco is from uh, my neck of the woods. Yeah. A white rose and a Narco is, uh, you know, Alberta. Uh, you've got some perfection. Those are not easy to get a hold of in my area. Uh, at this point, I'm trying to get as many as I can. Like some, obviously some of them are pretty good condition, but mm -hmm. a lot of them, it's just about like completing the sets kind of deal. Like, this deluxe one is the only one from PEI. So deluxe, that, yeah. So that was only around for about a month. And then... And well, then, I mean, that's got to be one of the rarer cans up here, you would think. Yeah, that's... The, that one, the power is really rare, too. That's a Maritime can, too. So there wasn't really much for Maritimes back in the day, but... 
And then my these tobacco cans are all, these are all Charlottetown, Pete Yaw ones, the Hickey and Nicholson Company. I found a few of those today. Yeah. Yeah, so this one's probably the rarest one because it was only around for a week before they changed the color to the green one up top there. Okay, yeah. So the, the blue one, they didn't like the color coordination of it, so they changed it around after a week. And then the rival twist, there's like 10 Hickey Nicholson cans total, but it's fun just completing the set. I mean, there's not worth much as far as outside of PEI, but a lot of the island collectors love finding like island stuff. And, a lot of this is the signage for Hickey and Nicholson here as well. So, so which is the one that you turned down an offer? Uh, was it this one here that somebody offered you a lot of money for? I yeah, think I read. Yeah, this one. People are like. Oh, that one right yeah, there. People, that's one of the harder ones. I mean, usually cardboard isn't worth as much, but a lot of people have been looking for that one, and there's only so many of them, right? So, because cardboard, like, it survived World War II, and a lot of them got trashed pretty quickly. But, and it's not so much like PEI. Collectors go crazy for this stuff, but if you go out of province, people won't be near as interested. But there's there was this guy who was looking for that sign for the set, and he didn't have it, so of course he's gonna try and pay up for it. Well, that's how it goes, yeah. you know. Like you said, you try and find the things you've never seen or, or are hard to come by. Now, have you found most of this stuff locally here? Um, a lot of like the the cans and that are local. I've started like for the higher end ones. I've had to go out of province and on Facebook and things like that, but. For PEI, it's such a small province, but there's a lot of stuff on here, a lot of collectors. Like cool. a lot of the signs and stuff are from here, the model ones from DC, but... I uh, like the uh, the planter's peanut tin is, that's pretty fun. Yeah, it's got good graphics range. on it, I really like the graphics, same with like the squirrel peanut butter one there. Yeah, or the uh, Brown Bear brand creamed honey. Yeah, and that's the same with the Wrigley sign too, that's a bit of a rare piece there, but... Yeah, Wrigley. it's got the little, uh, little guy on there. Yeah. Nichols is a good graphic. They found a whole bunch of these in a warehouse, I want to say 20, 30 years ago. So they're not mm -hmm. uncommon. And you can see even on yours, it's got the uh, sort of the marbleizing from, from the wax paper. Yeah, because they found stacks and stacks of them. It is a really good sign, uh, yeah, but they do turn a, up. It's a nice entry level. Yeah. Um, Red Ball Imperial cans. Those are ones you guys are always after. Yeah, and they're a little bit beat, but at this point, I'm just trying to get develop the condition of them after I can always trade up to get them. But. And that's an Irving Oil mini toy. Yeah, that's the Irving mini toy. Yeah, Irving. that's really unusual to see that. You don't see it very often in Irving anyway. Yeah. We don't. I mean, yeah, we don't. I'm looking to get the North Star one now. That's probably the next one. Oh, I've had that one before. Yeah. And this is the side of a gramophone yeah. delivery crate. Which oh, those are like, pretty it's fun. It's got really good graphics on it as well. I mean, uh, oh, it does, yeah. It's really thin, so it's amazing that it survived, but it's... Well, it looks like somebody used it as paneling on the other side yeah. painted it. Probably was uncovered when they were tearing down a house or pulling off the old well, panels. This Edward Street one here is porcelain. I think I paid 15 bucks for it. Somebody had it all painted over for like a, a grocery store kind of deal. And we seen a little bit of porcelain. We took the paint stripper to it and cleaned up porcelain. So that's like always the nice finds and things like that. But I mean, I can't obviously buy things for that cheap all the time. But it's definitely nice when you get something like that that got a nice turnover on it but oh yeah it's definitely nice so what's your favorite item here would you say my favorite item i mean there's a lot of sports stuff over here too so it's really hard to distinguish like i can see yeah you yeah. got some vintage so basketball like sports stuff in there and then my room's got everything i got signed pictures from a good chunk of the athletes so i mean it, it's hard to pick some favorite stuff out like i really love the double-sided pen lube up here too because that's a, a local piece but there's just a lot here now. I'm a big Toronto sports fan, so all that stuff is pretty precious to me. But nice early footballs. Yeah, I mean, like, and someone like this one, like this one was a a European one and an Aussie rules one, and that was in Value Village for like two bucks, right? So that's just kind of the stuff I keep up as well. Like my first like big finds, I guess, for like thrift stores and things like that. But. You know, at night this could be terrifying with all these hands staring yeah, at you. If you forget that you collect baseball gloves, and you get up in the middle of the night, you rub your eyes and look behind you, ah, it's a shadow of a bunch of hands. Or if you had earthquakes out here, then you'd have a bunch of hands shaking across the counter. The little head there, he's got his hat. Oh yeah, little guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's fun stuff though. Look at him. Is he meant to go in the water too? Would he float, do you think? Or do you think he'd sink like a stone? I... 
I wanted to test it, but then again... <laughs> yeah, you're on the ocean. You don't get yeah. things back when they fall no, in. No, that's... I'm not sure if I tested on that one, but... I think at one point it, it'd be meant to, but... He's in such good shape, I wouldn't want to... Start getting some rust on yeah. it. Yeah, beautiful collection of stuff. You would have liked the autograph auction that we did last year. Now, I had to ask a question when you're surrounded by all kinds of cool stuff. Is anything for sale? Now, we think, fingers crossed, that there might be a couple things. <laughs> yeah, there's usually a couple of things. I mean, everything's for sale at the right price, but most a lot of the stuff I'm partial to. But, I mean, there's always you need to sell stuff to buy more stuff or yeah. sell stuff to keep your business or hobby afloat for sure. I have but, a feeling your leftover stuff is most people's good stuff. So, yeah. I say let's have a look. <laughs> Thousands of bottles right from digging. I mean, some of them I, I that, bought because I was a, pretty into it. That, that's a poison bottle now? Yeah. And it's neat too because it's got the writing on the top, really nice ornate stopper as well. But Any with the skull and crossbones on them? Those might, there's one around here somewhere, but <laughs> the finding it's the hard part now at this point. I mean, there's, I got a room full of bottles that it's all packed. So I've been told that anything that I see in this little room up here, they're trying to clear out. So the price might be attractive. So I'm going to have a look around, see what there is. And maybe there'll be some items that we can bring back to Edmonton with us. This is kind of a neat piece. This is a Prince Edward Island penny. Prior to joining Canada, Prince Edward Island was kind of doing its own thing. It was a colony and they had their own minted coins. This one dates 1871. By the time 1873 rolled around, they had just used the, the common currency that came, the rest of Canada used, but they had their own at this time. So that's kind of a cool thing and a part of Canadian history. All right, I found a few things, maybe some cans that I can use in my general store that would look good up on display on the shelf. Um, this is a little patrol box where the patrolman have to use his key to check in every so often. Cast are quite heavy, actually. Um, neat little cans. Canadian, this is, um, you wouldn't want this to be full and put your hand in there because it was full of white lead at one point, but it was Tiger brand. It was used as a tar bucket or paint bucket at some point. And so, uh, sadly, it's not in good shape, but it's a good looking can. A few old bottles, some tins, uh, some tin types. Um, this was kind of a cool piece too. Uh, and I'm glad that he pointed this out to me because this is a Prohibition era uh, liquor bottle. And what they would do is you'd get this prescribed uh, from your doctor. I guess if you had a good relationship with your doctor, he'd prescribe you some booze and you'd go and, uh, you know, have yourself a good time. And uh, there's your prescription label on there. The only way you could get alcohol at that time. So a few cool things now to see if we can strike a deal. So we were able to strike a deal and I'm even getting one of his fancy shirts, the wealthy peasant. That's a good rule to live. And that's your dog. That's the one that was, yeah. uh, that's your friendly, <laughs> yeah. that's the friendly attack yeah. dog out there. Oh, that's very cute. We'll have to check. And you have a website, do you? Or? Yeah. Well, right now we're only on Facebook, but we're going to be on Instagram and that shortly. So if anybody wants to check out the wealthy peasant on Facebook, that would mean a lot to me. And a... well, let's flip the shirt around. We can see the... Yeah, look that up on it. Facebook and you'll see what this young man's all about yeah. here. But look, we did buy some things. A leather World War One trunk. Who knows? Maybe this will end up on the roof of the Isetta. Um, I did get myself a porcelain push bar. I didn't know if he'd sell it or not, but he did. Uh, it's French Canadian. Still kind of neat. And um, the Prohibition bottle. So a pretty good haul of stuff. I'm happy with this trunk. If I would have found this trunk underneath the bed in an old house, I think I'd go, oh, look what I found. But here I found it at your place. <laughs> And I think that's really cool. Thanks very much for having yeah, me live today. Thanks again, Alex. That's great to meet you. And I can't wait to see some of my pieces on your new general store. So it's exciting for me too to see what's coming up with my pieces. That's great. Yeah. Right, Load it up with the other treasures. So what did I get? Some nice old advertising tins that will look great in the general store. A push bar for the front door. Some Prohibition era glass whiskey bottles. We've got all sorts of old turn of the century. In fact, if you look at this one, this is dated 1897. This is a boxing paper. Look at this fellow right there. All sorts of different uh, bits of ephemera and paper. The Gentlewoman. Fashion magazines from the 1800s and 1900s, early 1900s. The Canadian Courier with some really cool old motorcycle ads in it. Glass bottles and a variety of other tin type pictures and bottles and collectibles so pretty interesting haul plus the leather suitcase itself which dates back to world war one thanks so much for watching today's episode and we'll see you all soon bye for now